Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another video. Um, so in this video, we're going to be doing something slightly different for the channel. Uh, normally we do shooters and stuff like that, uh, but we're going to be taking a look at vehicles or the vehicle template and how we can sort of add uh, race mechanics uh, and other bits and pieces to it. But in this video, I want to focus on checkpoints and lap timers. So what you can do is you can turn this um, basic template into uh, a racing game. Um, so you can sort of start your... your journey of making a racing game and, and hopefully sort of checkpoints and lap times is, is one of the things that you think of. Um, what I'm going to be doing is, if I've not already, I'm, I'm going to be putting a time lapse of me doing um, a, a lap of the track. It's probably going to be sped up a little bit just to save you the two minutes of me running around. Uh, I'm not a very good driver, as you'll probably see. Um, but I just want to explain how uh, this video is going to work. So up in the top left hand corner, you'll see that I've put some basic user interface and um, just a, a timer that's constantly running uh, to record your lap times. Um, what this will do is this will reset every time you pass um, the start line again. Uh, and then up in the right hand corner, um, you'll see lap times that have been recorded. So if we've not got to that part just yet, it will appear shortly. But essentially what will happen is once you've done a full lap and you've passed over the start line uh, again, uh, it'll record the time for that lap. Now, when you do a second lap, um, obviously your second time will be recorded there, but the color of it may be slightly different based on whether you was quicker or slower. If it was quicker, your lap time would be recorded in green. If it's slower, it's going to be recorded in red. Um, I believe that it'll just be the default gray if you somehow manage in milliseconds to m match your previous lap time. Uh, although not impossible, I find that very difficult um, that you're going to match it exactly down to the millisecond. But if you do, there's a, there's a challenge, I guess. Let me know in the comments if you manage to do that. That'd be uh, pretty interesting to, to find out. But also in the idea of um, what if somebody wants to cheat and just... Um, drive over the start line and then reverse back over it. Um, we've added checkpoints as well. So you'll be able to see on the map that you're driving over these yellow circles. Uh, these are the checkpoints and you can see in the center that you've got a checkpoint counter to basically ensure that you hit them all. Now, what the checkpoints will do is will prevent you from being able to end your lap if you've not completed all the checkpoints. So you have to go around the entire race to to basically finish the match. So um, that's what we're going to be covering today. Hopefully the time lapse has finished by now. If not, then you'll just see me waving around here. Um, but that's what we want to cover in the video. Um, I'm going to put some timestamps down below just so you can kind of skip over these talky bits and if you just want to get straight into it. Um, not too sure how much talking I'm going to do, but as I'm already getting the impression, it's probably going to be more than I should. So Without any further ado, let's jump into it and let's get this built. Okay, so before we start, I'm not going to spend that much time on UI. Um, we've just got a basic UI and it's just a place to store information. Um, got some lap times, some text blocks. Basically, it's all pretty much text blocks. We've got a list on the right to store lap times, but we'll get into that when we need to start setting it up. Um, most of these are going to be bound to sort of data that we're going to be collecting, sort of like checkpoints, lap times, um, current lap times, stuff like that. Um, but I'm not going to touch on it, the design in a sense, um, but when we need to put the data here, then obviously I'll, I'll need to discuss it. But um, if you just set up a basic um, sort of screen for recording this information or displaying this information, then you should be good to go. Um, some other things as well, we've got macros and blueprint interfaces. This is just to make data flow a bit easier without having tons of blueprints casting all over the place. Um, or some of the macros are basically just time conversions. Um, so take time and break it down into minutes, seconds, and sort of um, milliseconds. But um, uh, this should be straightforward. What I'll probably do is I'll probably cover these in sort of like a little separate bit um, for setting up the macros. But yeah, so just to get that out of the way. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm probably going to set up a new blue, uh, sorry, a new project, uh, and then we'll basically just replicate this uh, in that. So I'll see you there. Okay, so we've got a fresh template, uh, fresh vehicle template. Nothing's added to it just yet. 
Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just start with the start line. So the start line is obviously the beginning of the race. It's going to start all of our lap timers, all that sort of stuff. So it's, it's the most ideal place to start. So for this, I'm just going to create a basic blueprint class, uh, add an actor. I'm going to call it BP uh, start line. Open that up. And we don't need much in this, to be honest. Um, we're just going to add a cube. And this is going to be the actual line itself. Um, what we'll do is we'll just change the height of it to 0 0.1 maybe. And then change the width of it to, I don't know, 18, something like that. Uh, I'm also going to change the color of it from this gray to just the next closest bright color. Um, so before we do anything, I'm just going to drag this in and just see what it looks like. So let's get that. That didn't even drag out, did it? Drag this onto the world. Uh, for some reason, it's not liking that. What's it doing? Anyway, so that's that. Um, I'm going to rotate that around 90 degrees. Um, obviously, spend a bit more <laughs> time positioning stuff than I am. So we're going to start there. Um, so let's just drag that a bit further up. So that's fine. <clears throat> so obviously we've got now this kind of like speed bump. We're probably going to want to deactivate the collisions uh, just so then we don't hit a speed bump. So let's go back into that. Select the cube. And when I said deactivate, I didn't actually mean that. I'm just going to change it to overlap all. So then we just drive straight through it. But then what that allows us to still do is use this uh, begin overlap event, which we're going to need. So what we'll do is we'll hit uh, begin overlap. Okay, so on the begin overlap, we're going to want to start the race. Uh, so we're going to need to sort of set the timer up to be started as well. Um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put the uh, timer in the player controller just because it's a bit more universally accessed. This start lane, this start line can't really easily be casted to, um, whereas the vehicle controller um, can be. So let's just find that. I think that's actually in vehicle template and blueprints. So here we go. We've got vehicle player controller. So what we're going to do is here's the basic stuff that already exists, which is, you know, the event begin play stuff. Um, we're going to want to create a, a race timer. So I'm going to do a custom event. Start race. And obviously we're going to need to be able to end race as well. So I'll just do another custom event end race uh, one thing i do want to mention is i am a little bit ill at the moment as well so i might need to pause every so often just so i can breathe um i don't want to be sort of sniveling on the record so uh, i do apologize for that anyway so when we when we start a race um we're going to need some way of tracking time or some way of recording the current time so the best way that i found for that is just to use a timeline um timeline let's add that in and this is just going to be time so when we when we start the game we want to just play this from the start um, and then let's go into it and let's just add this uh, track so we're going to add a track and I'm actually going to put my track length as like 999 um, I don't think any race is going to be that long but it just kind of like gives you the most available time possible so we'll add a track add a float track and we're just going to call this time. Now, I'm just going to press shift and click twice. Uh, the first one is going to be time zero, value zero. And then the second one's going to be time 999, and the value is going to be 9992. So you can press these two buttons and just make that fit to scale. Uh, but essentially, we're just going to have a very um, gradual increase of time, um, which we can tap into. So once you've done that, you can close that out. So we've now got our time. We're going to start the race. This timer is essentially just going to keep ticking over. Uh, and then now we've got this time output. Now, we do need to convert this time into sort of um, the race style clock where we break it down into minutes, seconds and milliseconds. Um, this is where we start using the macros that I discussed earlier. Um, so I'm just going to pull it up on the other screen because it is a little bit complicated and I don't want to miss anything. 
Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to create a macro library. So I'm just going to go back to the content folder, right click, and I believe it's under miscellaneous. Uh, do, 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 do. Maybe it's not. It might be under blueprints. So here we go blueprint macro library. Um, this is just going to be an actor uh, blueprint macro library um, and then macros. So we're going to open that up. <clears throat> now, our input is going to be time and our output is going to be um, a string. So or it may be a text uh, actually. So for our inputs, we're gonna add an input and this one is going to be time. Whoops, my caps lock is on. So let's just change that time. Uh, and the, the actual uh, variable type is going to be a float because we're gonna be taking it from that uh, timeline track. And then our output is going to be a text. So it's going to be time, as text um, we'll change this now to whoops to text now also I just want to rename this macro to time as text uh, because we don't want essentially this is a time conversion but it, it's it, it's gonna be our time as text so we, we need to do the necessary breakdowns so we're gonna be taking in this time which is gonna be counting up in milliseconds um, so essentially the first thing that we need to do is just a division. So if we divide that by 60, we're going to be getting our minutes. Um, but just to remove any of the decimal places, we're going to use a floor. Uh, that gives us an integer. This should be uh, minutes. Uh, and this is where we start sort of dressing it up to look like the actual time we want. So we're going to want uh, an append node. Uh, an append and just to make sure that it is an append string uh, we just type that in so we're going to get an append node um, we're going to put in uh, zero uh, because it's going to be like zero one zero two um, again i think this may need adjusting if you're planning on having lap times longer than 10 minutes um, where you need to consider that if this becomes a double digit number uh, that would have to be uh, adjusted um, but what we'll do is we'll drag that straight into there. You'll get this little conversion node uh, where it's converting that to a string. Uh, and that's the first bit. So um, we've got the very first bit of our... Um, well, actually, I think we can do the other bit anyway. So let's just say if this is greater than 9... If this happens to be greater than nine, then we should just take this number as it is rather than putting the zero on the front of it. Yeah, so let's do that. So I'm gonna add a, a select node, a select, and is it gonna be a, it's gonna be a string, isn't it? Select string. So basically, whether this is true or false, uh, which one's, let's so, if pick A is true, then is A is return. Okay, fair enough. So I think I want these the opposite way around. Let me just get rid of that for a sec. Refresh node. Oh, well, it's, it's set now. Let, let me just add a new one. Um, a select. So here we go. So basically, if this is true, do this. If it's false, do this. So basically, I want this zero to be at the front if my number's less than nine or, yeah, so if it's less than nine, but if it happens to be greater than nine, I just want you to take that. So there you go, that's, that's fixed that. So now, no matter what, you're gonna get your minutes in the appropriate style. Um, and then this needs to be fed into another append. Um, okay, I don't know why that deleted all of that. I must have misclicked. So we're going to want that into an append. Now we're going to need like semicolons. I don't know if you can see that. So we're going to be breaking the time up into that typical race style time, like zero one dot dot 
26 dot dot whatever yeah so this is this is the time format that we're working towards just so you understand what we're doing here so we're taking our minutes to start with and we're, we're, we're putting that there um so that's the first part i guess um that's eventually going to be outputted as a text um i guess we need to add a few more pins so we're going to have the minutes here uh, we're going to have a semicolon there we're going to have the sorry not the minutes the seconds and then we're going to have the milliseconds here so we don't actually need that pin or that pin okay so that's that so let's let's go and add the next bit so again derived from time what we want to do is if we divide by 60 uh, we're going to get minutes but whatever's whatever's left once we've divided by 60 is going to be the seconds um, that we have left um, so what you can use is something called the modulo um, it's this percent sign or I know it as modulo but you know the, it's it is it's a, it's a modulo but essentially it's this percent sign so whatever you, whatever you divide by whatever's left over from that division will uh, will be given here um, so if we divide this by 60 if it was 61 for example you'd have this giving you the answer of one and then this would give you the answer of the one remainder from that 61 um, which which is great for us now obviously this works all the way down into milliseconds so we want to floor this as well um, we don't want to be getting sort of like decimal places in this um, and, I, and again, we need something very similar to, to this. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just copy that, try and speed things up nicely here, uh, plug all these in, and we'll just make the changes where necessary, um, which I don't actually think we need any changes. Um, essentially, if this number becomes greater than nine, we do not want to put this, this, this zero at the beginning, uh, and that makes our, our seconds for us. Uh, again, I'm just going to pull this down just to keep everything looking tidy. Now, this last one's a little bit different. Um, essentially, we're, we're just going to take the whole number as it is uh, and floor it. Um, I'll be honest, I had to Google this one because I wasn't too sure how it worked. Um, but then what we'll do is we take the same time again. Uh, and subtract this so we take a rounded down version of it and subtract it from itself um, we do a multiplication times it by a hundred we then floor that number again and then we have the same output so let's paste that here. I do apologize on glossing over this bottom one. Again, um, I had to Google this part myself. Um, so I don't want to pretend I understand what's going on there because maths is not my strong point, although um, I make these games and stuff. But either way, that spits out a time as text um, and that should work nicely. So we'll just press save on that. Uh, and then within this vehicle controller, we should be able to see now time as text. So because you made a, a, a macro library, then macros are going to be accessible from anywhere in um, in your game, in, in Unreal. Uh, so you should, should be just fine uh, typing in time as text and you should get that conversion factor. So we should now be able to plug time straight into that. And we want to we want to we want to spit this out. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to promote this to a variable, and I'm just going to put race time. Tell you what, um, race time as text, uh, and then every update we're going to we're going to set that. And if we ever wanted to end the race, we could just stop. Um, and that's pretty much it to be honest. So I'm just going to cover that in a comment and just put race timer just so then we can uh, keep track of everything. But now back on our start line, what we can do is um, if we if we drive over the line, 
what we can do is we can start that timer. So let's get a reference to our our player controller. So let's do get player controller. Let's then cast to vehicle player controller. Do that from event begin player. Let's just tell you what, let's just get rid of these two because they're clogging the place up. Let's pull this back over here. And then as the vehicle controller, I'm just gonna promote that to a variable. Uh, just so then we can tap into it from anywhere. Hit compile so then that's loaded in memory. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, as vehicle controller, we're going to start race. Now, of course, we need somewhere to display that on the screen. Um, so we're gonna need to also make a UI. Um, now, where would be the best place to put the widget? I'm probably gonna say on our vehicle controller again. Um, so there's one already added here. Um, so yeah, we'll add, we'll add our one to the same place. So I'm gonna create a new folder in our content browser. I'm just gonna call this UI. And again, I keep leaving my caps lock on. UI, of course we can't. Um, UMG, why not? So open that up, right click, we're gonna add a user interface. And I'm just gonna call this one W underscore main. And open that up. Okay, so a very basic UI, we're not gonna to spend too much time on it. I obviously put some more effort into it yourself, but I'm just gonna breeze through this. We're gonna chuck in a canvas panel to start with, and then essentially the rest of it is just text. So I'm just gonna drag a big text block up here. Um, I'm gonna make it a bit bigger, um, and I'm going to change my font size to 32, uh, just to make it look a bit tidier, and I'm probably actually gonna change that now back to 50. Let's set that and set that to 200. I can't imagine it's gonna be much bigger, but I want it to be big and obvious on the screen. Um, and then if you'd like to, you can add another text block to the side of it, just saying lap time or something like that. Um, so that's that for now. I'm not gonna go into any more than that, um, but we do also need to bind this to our play controller. So, what we're going to do is in the, oh, one sec. I almost missed a step then. So with your text block selected, I am actually gonna rename it to race timer. I'm gonna set it to a variable up at the top uh, just so then we can access it. Now in the graph, if you come over to this, uh, what you can see now is you've got race timer set up. Now, what we need to do is on event construct, we need to tap into our, um, player controller to get that information. So we'll get rid of the tick and the event pre-construct uh, and we're just gonna do uh, get player controller. And this is why I like using the controller where necessary um, or the game mode, for example, because you can you can get a reference to it um, straight away from pretty much anywhere. And it's, it's pretty universal, it's nice. So then we're gonna cast to the vehicle controller. Now you may read online that Cast into things is really bad. Now it is if you cast into loads of unique stuff all the time. Now the vehicle controller is already loaded in memory. So cast into it multiple times. Although I wouldn't cast to it too often when necessary or where you can. Um, really it's, it's not gonna make that much of a difference because again, it's already in memory uh, and, and you're fine. Um, so as the vehicle controller, we should now be able to get access to that race timer. So get race time as text, uh, and then we should be able to set our race timer variable that we've created. So get, and then what we want to do is set text, set text, and that's just going to plug straight into that. Um, now, granted, that's only going to do that once, I think. Um, do 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 cannot be found. Race time as text cannot be found. Um, interesting. Did I? Oh, we didn't compile that, so maybe that's the reason why. Let's ah, there we go. So make sure you compile. 
what's really annoying is I usually compile every time I make a change, but the one time I didn't, of course, I'm recording. So make sure you compile, otherwise you get errors. Actually, what I've been is quite foolish. Um, we don't actually want to set that here. We just want to get this um, this reference. So let's promote that to a variable. Uh, so now we've got a reference to our um, player controller. Uh, what we can do is go back to the designer and under bind, you should see as a vehicle controller, uh, we can then just select race time. So there we go. We've made a binding which updates all the time. Hit compile and play. And let's give this another test. So hopefully when we jump over the line, uh, again, nothing happens, which is uh, bizarre. So once we've got that binding, uh, all we need to do now to make sure that it works is we need to go to our player controller and just add in our uh, UI. Uh, so then it actually displays on the screen. So I'm going to push all of this existing stuff over. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a widget. Let's pick our main widget from there. I'm going to promote this to a variable just to get a reference to it. So main widget. Uh, and then add to viewport. Once that's compiled, we should be able to now just press play and hopefully if everything goes right, our timer now starts on the screen. So that's great. So you can see the milliseconds are flying up there and then when, obviously when we get to minutes um, and what have you, that'll just tick over very nicely. So great. So we've got a race timer to start with. Okay, so I'm just editing the video and I've just realized that we're at 26 minutes already and we've only done the start line. So I'm going to make the decision to split this video up into parts. Um, that's probably not great considering how little we've covered, but I did tend to um, talk a bit too much about it at the beginning um, on the intro, giving you the example of what the whole sort of series or video is going to give you. Um but yeah, because of, because of the length of it, I don't really want to be putting an hour-long videos out because they are difficult to get through. I'd rather break it up into chunks uh, and it makes it easier to sort of digest uh, in, in smaller pieces. In my mind, I might be wrong. Um, but if what I've covered in the video so far was of any use to you or um, if you want me to push really hard to get the next videos out, please consider giving me a like. Um, I'll take that as feedback of how, how soon I should sort of push the next videos. I'm going to try and get it done as soon as possible anyway because uh, no one wants to hang around waiting for part two. Um, but um, if you like this video or if you like any of my other videos, if you've watched them, um, please consider subscribing if you've not already. If you have, thank you very much. And also, I just want to mention down below in the description, there will be a link to the Discord server. There's quite a few of us there now, and I do respond to messages rather quickly. So if you are struggling with anything or if you just want to fire over a quick question or anything like that, you can do. Link's down there. Uh, join if you want to. Um, and I'll see you around. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.